going. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Cosm's April Full Moon Gathering. It's your girl, Alexis Batty, coming to you live from the Great Hall in Entheon. Isn't she pretty? Look at this, look at this. Whether you're with us in person or are tuning in from afar, I send my deepest gratitude for your participation in tonight's festivities. We have a really great program this evening that promises laughter, wisdom, healing, and so much more. All you have to do is sit back and chillax, okay? And if you are tuning in from home, this might be the time where you spark one up, you dig? Only for the people at home. Do not do that in Entheon. Great. Um, so let's, let's welcome our honorary guests, shall we? Please put your hands together for Cosm founders and visionary artist, Alex Gray and Alison Gray. Come on, let's go. Talking stick. Hey, everybody. Happy, Happy 420. 420. Happy. <laughs> Happy Cannabis Day. And it's on the full moon this time. It's so perfect. All right. We're so glad you're here. We do have a wonderful program tonight. But um, first of all, I want to just welcome everybody coming from all over. And, and of course, Alexa did say that we have people from all over the world tuning in. So everybody right now, just turn around to the camera and say hello to the people out in the world tuning in. Hey! We have people, we have people in the great, we have people in the All One Gallery and in the, and in the library at the Gray House and all over YouTube. So it's really wonderful to be with you for the 266th in a consecutive chain, unbroken, of cause and full moon ceremonies, which we, which we, yeah, two six six. That's you guys, and uh, this is your, this is your special night. The two hundred sixty six. We started them in our home in Brooklyn, in January of two thousand three. So this, we're in our twenty first year, and twenty one is a very special number around here because, well, there's twenty one sacred mirrors. But as far as what 266, we've got 10. We've got six, we got two, six, six, that's 12. No, we got 14. What have we got, everybody? 12, 14. So that's five. So five is the number of the human, you know, because we have a head, two arms, and two legs. So it's a very human night, and human in the sense of, you know, earthly, like the things that grow from the earth, like cannabis that we honor on this d day of liberation. See, because really the theme around here today is liberation, right, Alex? Okay. Yes, yes. It is I, liberation. And I, and, and I think cannabis gives us a sense of liberation. I think it's one of the uh, kind of chief factors uh, uh, that uh, unite a lot of the members of our community, I, I think, you know? It's, a, it's like a uh, sacramental bond, you know, that people who feel uh, inclined toward psychedelics and toward cannabis and things like that are uh, consciousness explorers. And I think that, uh, and, and somewhere in their explorations, they may have uh, entered sacred ground, you know, and uh, I think that for many of us who g had given up on religion, basically, because uh, it just didn't make any sense, really, uh, it, then in having psychedelic experiences and encountering some kind of spiritual reality, you're left in a new kind of situation where you're looking to find the others who may have had a similar 
kind of experience. Yeah, that's what we found. And when we started the full moon ceremonies, that we was just really a handful of friends. There are, there is one Ro of whom one is, of here who is here tonight. Rosie, stand Rosie, up for a Rosie. Yeah, I was yeah. always honored because she's been been with us as long as we've been uh, going on. But we we started them in our in our home, and then in we, as soon as we opened it up, two months later we opened it up to, or maybe it was three months internet, we started to find that there were people that wanted to celebrate uh, the full moon with us. And what, why is it that we even chose the full moon to celebrate? Why do we celebrate the full moon? And, and it was April that was the first public full That's moon right. That's right. Uh, 21 years ago. And um, well, a shaman advised us to. That's the, the truth. Uh, his name was Alex Stark. And he said that building sacred space is the work of a community. And um, let's start full moon ceremonies and see if we can call in community to help us vision and um, support the building of a sacred space. You know, and it was the first actual plan you know, it wasn't a fundraising scheme, but, you know, which I thought we, that's what we're looking for. Where's the fundraising team? No, it was the prayer committee prayer that showed up. Now, uh, Al uh, Alex really had it right, I think. Uh, and the full moons started to call in more and more people. But why do we celebrate the full moon, Alex? Well, I like to think of it as a sacred mirror because, uh, you know, like the moon itself is a reflecting surface, you know, and uh, it's reflecting the sun. And uh, so it's like we're also reflecting the greater light of God, I like to think. But also you can look at communities for thousands and thousands of years have been gathering on the full moon. For one thing, if you were wandering at night, you know, and there was no street lamps or anything, the full moon, you can practically travel if you know where you're going. You know, you can see your way. So it's a natural thing that communities would come together at that time. But also, uh, it, you know, they're, uh, they're crescendos of some kind. Um, actually, our... The, the water uh, in our bodies responds like all the bodies of water uh, to tidal forces uh, of the moon. So we're all, in a sense, sort of gravitationally, personally affected uh, in our bodies because every cell's uh, water, we're mostly water beings. So we have some kind of attunement. Some people have more, more of it than others, but there's a, there's a kind of strange connection. And also, it's like it's a, per a perfect circle in the sky. You know, it's a way to, like, it, it knocks us out of our, you know, our mind, our news feed, and you just gaze at this cosmic wonder you know, so it, in a sense, I think it's a um, a symbol of the soul uh, because of its luminous and spherical qualities. You know, and yeah. Some of us just came from seeing the uh, the total eclipse too, and uh, and and some of us saw you know partial but very good views of the eclipse, even if it wasn't total. So it, it is has been it is an awesome sight. It is an awesome sight. Oh, look at and that. It's a, and it's there a we are. it's a full moon, actually. You see the full moon in the daytime and uh, but it appears as black, which is a it, it starts to make you wonder about whether you're in a simulation. It's so it's so perfect. Yeah, like there's, How a, could... there's a dome over our head and we're all living inside of this thing and they're <laughs> filming us. Wait but... a minute. <laughs> That's too perfect. It is. It's, it you is know? too perfect. But yeah. it does bring, you know, chills to you when you see it. And uh, 
and it's a very powerful, powerful experience. It's, you know, you can imagine people, ancient people who didn't know what was going on, and it gets really, really dark like that, and then it, you know, like the sun disappears. I mean, it, it would have to be. There was scary. a famous battle that was stopped, you know, because it was happening on the battlefield, and, and everyone believed that the gods were intervening, and they had had enough time to stop this four year war, and it did stop a war. Uh, I believe it did stop like, a war. Uh, I've heard of that it was too. Like a, well, know. anyway, we have a very amazing program tonight, and in case you didn't know about it, we're going to Alex and I are going to sit down now, and we're going to talk a little bit about Cannabis Day, and you know, and 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 the powerful uh, liberation that it you know has been for some people, and um, and and so we're going to sit down and start. Uh, to talk to you a little bit about cannabis. And then, of course, we're going to follow that with our wonderful guest, Julie and Jeremy, who are going to come up. Julie is an incredible author of the pot book and many other books. And Jeremy's an amazing she's thinker. She's a doctor. And she's a doctor. She's a psychiatrist. But uh, this is her specialty. And Jeremy is an amazing uh, photographer and companion and, and also a great musician. He's going to sing us a song about cannabis. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Okay. okay, very good. So that's what we're going to do. And of course, we have Amanda Sage here. Ah! Amanda, <laughs> you, look like, you look like a fairy queen tonight. You really do. All right, well, let's sit down and talk about cannabis for a little bit. How many people have never tried cannabis? Really? <laughs> you know... I tell that you makes it unanimous. I, I, you know, starting when we started, I started in 1969, um, smoking cannabis. I never thought I would see the day. It was so depressing for a while, the way that it was, it was being, you know, villainized and criminalized. And it ha still has a ways to go, but, and in this world it has a ways to go. But I think that it is, um, well, it's an enlightened point of view. Look at that. Why not try it? It's not going to hurt you. Okay, well, you know, we like to call these days the high holidays, you know. Uh, like uh, 419 was just yesterday. Amanda Sage's birthday, by the way. Yay! Yeah. Yay, Amanda. <laughs> she was with us for her birthday. Yeah. I'm so honored. And I like to yeah. say good things were born on that day, uh, including uh, kind of the discovery of the... Uh, psychoactive effects of LSD. It was the first uh, sort of intentional uh, LSD journey uh, given by the man who discovered the substance, uh, Albert Hoffman. And we've gone into detail on, on about that yesterday, but the, um, he was a chemist at Sandoz Pharmaceutical uh, and he had uh, been working uh, in his lab with uh, ergot derivatives. And so uh, this particular one, on April 16th, he said he heard the voice of LSD calling him. So I consider that kind of a, a holy messenger kind of thing. Like ain't it, religions start, angels' voices, you know. And so at any rate, uh, he was called to uh, remix this chemical that he had discovered five years earlier. And he gave a self-experiment a few days later on 419 and took a minuscule amount, as many of us know, micrograms, millionths of a gram, 250 micrograms. And it was significant enough uh, a dose uh, that uh, he believed at first he was uh, that he found everything hilarious. And then about an hour later, he wondered if he had poisoned himself. And so he got scared and he uh, took a famous bicycle ride uh, home through the uh, town of Basel and uh, got home to die at home. But uh, a doctor reassured him that he wasn't dying. His eyes were a little dilated. And uh, as he uh, began to kind of uh, uh, come down a little bit, he recalled the uh, experience of being a child in a meadow, seeing all the uh, flowers and, and uh, beautiful trees and things, and thinking, everything's 
made of chemicals. I want to understand that. So uh, he recovered his myst the mystic origins of his uh, desire to be a chemist. And uh, so we remember Dr. Hoffman. Those fondly. of us who have had the experience of, of uh, LSD or other psychedelics can, I think, corroborate the feeling of self-revelation. You know, that, that he had the first LSD journey and that he had a self-revelatory experience about who he was and his history and what made him uh, love what he loved. You know, he was in his 30s and he was, you know, like recalling back to what made him, what brought the, the origin of his interest in chemistry. So anyway, we, 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 we honor him in the psychedelic reliquary, as you know, if you haven't been in there, check it out. He uh, has the most beautiful prayer. We might be even reading it later because his prayer is amazing. But it is Cannabis Day, after all. We did the, we right. did we did Bicycle Day yesterday and it was on YouTube it was on uh, IG and it was really good so anyway but who what do we have what do we have about oh, uh, well just so you sacred know Sacred Mirror's Day and uh, yeah Earth well, Day why is, is it Sacred up. Mirror's Day because it's 421 and 21 is the number of Sacred Mirrors so we just filled in the gap in the high yeah. holidays yeah. by making that the designated four special Mirror's holidays Day. exactly yeah. Uh, All right, so seven lights of cannabis wisdom, Alex. You start. Okay, the light of utility. Cannabis is nature's most useful plant. Hemp fibers for clothing, rope, hemp paper, hemp oil, hemp plastic stronger than steel. The light of sexuality. The increased sensitivity and aphrodisiacal quality. Aphrodisiacal. <laughs> <laughs> Qualities of cannabis. Inebriation are undeniable. Mm. The light of health, the numerous medical applications of for cannabis, for healing and hemp powder for, as a complete food are a boon for the body. We know. The light of love, cannabis opens the heart and sensitizes us to others. The light of poetry, cannabis allows the flowing tongues of bards contact with new modes of knowing and speaking. The light of vision, Opening of the third eye allows the artist and everyone access to the divine imagination. The light of God. Ganja smoking babas, Rastafari, and many others regard cannabis as a sacrament, opening us to the highest creative source and allowing us to realize we are the light. There we go. It's so true. Now, I was asked to uh, sort of redesign the uh, High Times Cannabis Cup and so uh, it'll be recurring throughout here, but I tried to implant the history um, in uh, symbolism and some uh, words. So uh, we've got, let's see, uh, the appearance of uh, cannabis in China, you know, sort of 10,000 years ago uh, in Taiwan. We've got the first evidence of uh, cannabis showing up in pottery shards. These are more complete kind of ceramic vessels that have the impressions of, of cannabis uh, or hemp rope on the uh, sort of uh, ceramic, uh, you know, kind of things that archaeologists have dated uh, the agricultural uh, a kind of use development of cannabis to uh, about 10,000 years ago. And that's what they think of as the beginning of agriculture. Um, there was a uh, uh, 2,700 uh, years ago in the uh, Gobi Desert, this body uh, was buried with uh, two pounds of cannabis. So uh, out in China, and uh, China also uh, was the first to note the... Uh, uh, medicinal qualities there. The Shinto. Yeah. Well, they used uh, cannabis as a uh, incense, you know, and uh, to connect them with the nature spirits. And they harvested the hemp, and they would they made make these a ropes. Look at that rope. That's that's top. You know, at the beam, that twisted thing. They really honor hemp. That's how much they honor it. They make sculpture out of it, and then make it part of their altar. They they. They light it on 420. They light it? No, I'm kidding. Looks like they should light it. 
It looks sort of a little like a like a like a smudge stick or something. Yeah. Anyway, keep going, keep going. The biggest spliff. Well, this yeah. is Sachet, and Sachet is the Egyptian. Uh, well, she's a goddess. She's also the wife of Thoth. Thoth was, you know, the you know he was the philosopher. Magician, uh, but the magician, yeah. and she would all, write down all of his magical formulas and stuff because Sachet is said to have uh, developed language and, and developed writing, particularly from language. So she always is portrayed with a, with a cannabis leaf over her head, and you'll see her through to out temples, and they say, you know, that all, there's a, there is an um, inscription that you see with Sachet on, on numerous times, she opens the gates of heaven for you. So it was definitely an Egyptian thing. They really loved it. Right. They had incense burners, and I think probably the first people to notice how, how it made you feel were people that just burned it. In a, you know, I think that in the tabernacle uh, that they had, you know, the, with Moses and all, they were burning incense and, you know, uh, substances that cause smoke, that cause inhalation. Anyway, who is this? This is, this the, is the Ebers papyrus, and it uh, is just one of the early Egyptian uh, medical uh, kind, indic, incanabula, and so they have a lot of different uh, reasons you should use uh, cannabis as a So anybody that medicine. doesn't know... Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to talk about the cannabis cup. Sorry. No, it, but it, it was just pointing uh, out India. Oh. It, all that's written on the, uh, on the cup. The Rig Veda was uh, kind of the earliest religious text of humanity. And uh, it mentions Soma, an elixir of immortality, uh, and was, uh, that was king of the plants. Now, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions about the nature of uh, Soma, but it was clearly some kind of psychedelic. And uh, the uh, story with uh, uh, Shiva is that, uh, you know, Shiva was having like an argument with his uh, family or something and uh, went, went out for a walk by himself and took a, a rest under a plant and uh, woke up and ate some uh, ganja that was uh, nearby. And basically it rejuvenated him and he became like uh, the uh, prince of bong, you know. And uh, so ganja smoking babas, uh, you know, they're uh, in worship to uh, Shiva, yeah. and uh, there's a there's a prayer that we do before we smoke. It's so kind. Should we do it? Yeah. Let's do it right now. Jai Shiva Shankara Hari Hari Ganja. And then, of course, we say the Jewish prayer too. Okay. You want to do that too? Baruch Atah Noi Eloheinu Melech Olam Pore Pariha Ganja. Amen. Yeah. <coughs> So that yeah. means, blessed art thou, creator of the universe, who has sanctified us to imbibe can, uh, ganja. Holy ganja. Holy ganja. Yeah. And, and really, it's funny, because we love it, and we love to, we're amused by it, but it is really a time to stop and think about, you know, like, you're going to take another puff, you know, like, make it work for you, make it be all you can make it be, you know? This is your special time. That makes it more sacred. It's, it's just adding a note of consciousness to doing it, because we just kind of like, light it up, uh, you know? But still, we could become a little more conscious of it and get more benefit from it, I really, I really find. So I we always too. stop and, and uh, pray. Kumbh Mela, yeah. uh, the ganja smoking babas come out, and there are throngs, millions that gather uh, and this is part of the sacramental connection with Shiva. Oh, I love this. Talk, talk about this I, I early mean, synagogue, 2,700 years old. Well, how do... But, what, you, but you found this picture, and I'm yeah. very impressed with that. that I'm, and I love to include the old synagogues and that they were actually... Um, but, but Drug dens. Acacia, acacia wood and cannabis yes. were being smoked in the air, they would fill the room with this smoke when mm -hmm. they were, you know, just for the priests, you know, in the tabernacle could go in there and they would become inebriated and I, and the Torah was written there. So anyway, um, where yeah. did, how did they find out? Where did they it, find that? You see, the, the those 
two altars there. They had uh, two different substances. They did scrapings and archaeochemistry to determine what was uh, what they were using as incense there. And one of them was cannabis. And uh, the other one was acacia. Yes. So uh, acacia has DMT in it. So uh, the practice would be you put down a blanket, you know, to seal you into this small chamber, and then you light the incense and have the smoke fill the room. And then uh, this, these were the uh, areas where the rabbi would go for at one meant or atonement. So, and so the atonement was said not to happen until it was filled with smoke and uh, been in there for a while. So it was clearly contact with the uh, sort of visionary uh, realm that psychedelics allow that uh, the earliest religions were uh, in contact with. Can I and say something about it, atonement? Yeah. Just for a second. Sure. At one mint. It's the same it's spelled the same way, at one mint. So when so every day in within my prayer that I do in the shower, I say uh uh, uh about at one mint. I talk about at one mint, you know. And um and I think about it as uh forgiveness. Because when you're at one, you forgive everything and everyone. And I really do think cannabis has that effect. If you're angry or you're upset and you take a little cannabis, sometimes you can forgive You'll everything. forget what you were mad about. Yeah. Oh. That's just a joke. Oh. But, and it's true. But you, but you do forget a little bit. And maybe the forgetting a little bit is part of the feeling better. It you helps know, let it, interrupt. It, it, yeah. it interrupts your yeah. kind of like yeah. uh, No, I think it's upset. true, though. Yeah. Anyway, so let's keep going. Okay. Right, so do uh, so a, a Roman text that mentions cannabis and what it's good for. I'm not going to go into. I'll tell you one thing: it's good that. for two things that? that they said it was good for. What's that? Treating earache and suppressing sexual longing. Hmm. I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. So the first guy to impose a tax on cannabis there, Egypt. The f against the import of uh, Egyptian cannabis in Rome. Now, this is where I wanted to say one thing about the cup. Yeah. First what? of all, I wanted everybody to realize that there is a sample cannabis cup. These were made by Alex, I mean, designed by Alex for high times. And uh, they have a cannabis cup. They've been having cannabis cups every year for a long time. When it wasn't legal here, they were doing it in Amsterdam. And Alex and I got to go to Amsterdam. And you'll see images of that. But... But this, Alex, when he designed this cup, which is in the psychedelic reliquary, you can see it, and it has mirrors around it so you can see all the sides, was designed to give you the history of cannabis. So that's why we re return to here. It keeps right, uh, like identifying the different historic what, what milestones. What dates in Greece and what right, dates okay. in America yeah, does it here. show up? Now, and this stuff. is Hildegard of D von Bingen. A lot of people know that she's like one of the earliest. You know, uh, well, she's a Renaissance uh, visionary artist who saw visions and had art made of her visions. But she used cannabis. Mm-hmm. Medicinally. Okay. And uh, then this is the earliest representation of it, a kind of botanical representation from France uh, 1,500 or 500 years ago, basically. Uh, King Henry, what did he do? Well, the thing why, was, why do we you, care? You, you, the only the only reason why we care is because he made it mandatory for everybody who had any acreage, who owned any land, that they had to give uh, like a, like five percent of their land to to growing hemp. And uh, because of so it was mandatory to grow hemp. And and if you yeah you yeah. had to do it. And, and she, she came along after him, and she said we're reinstituting this, and we're putting a fine on people who don't. So so we're just showing that this You'd be this fined time if in history, you didn't grow it. That this <laughs> at this time in history, uh, you know, hemp was very important for making sails and making ropes, but people did smoke it as well. Mm. How do we know people did smoke it as well? Yeah. Archaeo uh, archaeo traces of archaeo cannabis were chemistry. found. Mm -hmm. Yeah, traces yeah. of ca cannabis were found in the pipes of William Shakespeare. Yeah. Do be or not do be? Do be huh? or not do be? I don't know. Do be, do be, do. Yeah. And so we all know, as paper. we all know, mm -hmm. that the that yeah the Declaration of Independence uh, the um, 
if the Constitution is written on hemp paper. Yeah, this is the Declaration of Independence. Is, that's written on yeah. hemp paper, too. Yeah, there it was. And uh, the primary crop was uh, cannabis. Yep. Yeah, he's ready. By American. Uh, let's see. Nepo uh, right. He invades Egypt and discovers, like, the, uh, what, Rosetta Stone, but then also, like, um, hemp. Uh, in various forms, you know, like uh, they started getting hashish and stuff. So they, uh, in France then, they had this Club des Hashishans, and the first artist that was uh, known to go there was uh, Delacroix. So he's a kind of a romantic, uh, incredible expressionist painter. But uh, Victor Hugo and Balzac and uh, Baudelaire famously were part of that uh, club. And uh, Adomie, a famous French uh, painter and uh, lithographer, yeah, uh, and did a lot of caricatures. Yeah, uh, yeah made this little uh, thing about what was going on there, getting high in now the here's parlors. Victoria's yeah. real secret. Victoria, <laughs> you probably May have most done likely yeah. used cannabis. They say because her doctor wrote extensively about it. He was her personal physician wrote extensively about it. So you can count on, uh, she had menstrual pain, by the way, too. That's another secret that we're letting out here, right in the room. It's so personal, God. Um, well, what, what about this one, Alex? The Turkish smoking parlors opened yeah. all over, all, well, over see every, the, all over the world. The, the Sultan of Turkey uh, in this, uh, let's see, 1876, it was the centennial. It was 100 years since the birth of America. Okay, and they had the first World's Fair in America, and it was in Philadelphia, and they had a Turkish uh, pavilion, and in the pavilion they provided cannabis in three forms. One of them was smoked flour, one of them was uh, hashish, and one of them was Turkish delights, which was like a candy. cannabis candy of some kind. So this was the first time that we had like the extract you know, like uh, in in uh, candy form, we had hashish and flour all at the same time. So it caught on in America. And they had like 500 Turkish smoking parlors in Manhattan, you know, in the uh, like late 1800s. And so we have cannabis jars downstairs in the psychedelic reliquary from the 1850s to 1870s uh, when cannabis was legal and you would go into the apothecary and just get a few bud, you know, and uh, it, it was also mm -hmm. included in like 250 different, you know, stuff you can buy. Here they are. So things you could buy over the counter. You could go into a pharmacy and buy things, and there was at least 250 uh, different different elixirs and and potions that had cannabis in them. Cannabis even, even Americana. Rubbing them yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so hashish candy. Right. They sell it Turkish Turkish delight in Turkey now, but it's not hashish, unfortunately. Yeah. So so then the kind of like the racial thing like started, you know, where they started you know wanting to rebrand cannabis, you know, as uh, these terrible things, you know, and did terrible things to you, and there was a lot of disinformation that happened, and you know the. The doctors pleaded with them not to make it illegal because it was good for uh, people. But, you know, instead we got a lot of disinformation and a lot of uh, people being put in prison that shouldn't be. Uh, and it really puzzles me to see marijuana connected with narcotics, dope and all that crap. It's a thousand times better than whiskey. It's an assistant, a friend. People have been really a stand for it. Honestly, like like the Marleys, they've just not given up, and they just it, it, love is my religion, and I'm using it, and so there you go. So people have been, and there's the there's the Snoop Dogg, the more medicated, the more dedicated. Yeah. He's been he's been a real stand, and and Willie Nelson, of course. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, what does Willie yeah. Nelson say, Alex? Yeah, well, okay, so he's just acknowledging that the biggest killer on the planet is stress, and the best medicine is, and has been, always has been, cannabis. Um, let's see, 
other oh, things that are on the uh, on this cannabis cup are Allison's yes, secret right. letters. You yes, know, the secret, secret writing. Secret writing is, a, is a, a language that came to me on psychedelics, and it basically translates to this is the language of creative expression. If you ever want to know what I'm talking about a little further, come over and we'll talk about it. But I talk about it a lot. But creative expression coming through symbols. And there are a lot of symbols on the, can yep. on the cannabis. Yeah, cannabinoids. Uh, Raphael Mechulam in uh, uh, 1964 discovered uh, cannabinoids uh, th and uh, that were like THC and uh, all the various hundreds of uh, cannabinoids that he discovered. And he discovered an uh, endocannabinoid system inside of the human body. Uh, that's why we like cannabis. Uh, and uh, because it is distributed throughout the body, all these various uh, areas. And we're discovering, continuing to discover what it can be good for. And uh, I'm interested to learn that uh, there is uh, some therapeutic uh, use possibly for a treatment of uh, Alzheimer's and things like that. Uh, and uh, hempcrete, super cool, you know. Okay, uh, yeah. Well, that's us. That's that, us. We, yeah. we painted uh, early on days, nineteen ninety six. The cannabis cup. Alex got to do the poster twice of the cannabis cup, and we got to go and be celebrity judges. And that's really something that they haven't figured out yet is how to judge cannabis. <laughs> the best way. It's the not. Best, it's we, not we easy. We did it twice, yeah. and, and, and <laughs> but I say the best way to judge cannabis is probably chemically, and in a laboratory. Alex, what are you doing? I, I'm, I'll, I'll, you take know. I'll take that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Where are we? Why are we rushing? Okay, these are some of the beautiful images. You, you keep talking, honey. Okay, I, I just thought that, it, you know, it's interesting now uh, that, uh, you know, not only for um, medicine uh, and all its many uses, you can see Sachet there uh, is yes. symbolized. Uh, and, see? Uh, this is like bringing back the old time religion of uh, cannabis. And uh, so there is a church of cannabis in uh, Denver. At, let, advance it forward. Oh, advance it forward again? Yeah, please. Okay, even more? Yeah, please. Uh, no, you're going backwards, backwards. babe. Backwards, okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, there we, we go. go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kosher yep. cannabis. Yep, blessing the, the first cannabis. first church, church of cannabis. There you're it gonna, is. You can have it back. Yeah. Yeah. Now, ok Okuda uh, did the interior of this, and he's really a wonderful artist. Uh, and uh, Church that. of Cannabis does regular events there. Psychedelic. Very, very cool. And, uh, yeah. Beautiful. Uh, Those are all the... That shows you, if you're in one of the blacker states, the gr black or green states, they are, you know, legal completely. And then... And then <gasps> There it goes. So okay. we're in there. It's working. There's New York. There's yep. New Jersey. We're all That's, good. Yeah. Right. Yeah, noticing the still uh, race war that goes on in uh, the drug war. Uh, and, you know, we always say that uh, entheogens are a civil right. And uh, so many have, have gone to uh, the Supreme Court to assure that right. Uh, the cognitive, use of cognitive liberty. We're talking about yeah. freedom. We're talking about liberation today. This is yeah. cognitive liberty. Right. And uh, you'd, you had just wanted to include this... Uh, uh, quote from uh, Carl Sagan. Yeah, the cannabis experience has greatly improved my appreciation for art, a subject which I had never much appreciated before. The understanding of the intent of the artist, which I can achieve when high, sometimes carries over to when I'm down. This is one of uh, the human frontiers which cannabis has helped me to traverse. So it's, it's nice to hear uh, when people would speak up you know, and in the uh, height of the drug war, and uh, and we can hope that uh, there will be continued advance uh, for the, uh, you know, for cannabis, and it's the longtime ally of uh, humanity. And of course, there's so many ways that uh, cannabis has influenced art. And uh, I was thinking about all the dab rigs and uh, bong uh, glass Glassware. and things like yeah, that. Yeah, people You know, which glass. is really quite astonishing. And uh, you know, there's uh, quite a a great number of graphic uh, artworks, you know, I think I'll, uh, you know, kind of change the show for next year. But, uh, you no, know. No, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> do something. But is this where you want to call it? 
uh, and then to our talk on cannabis? I, I, I okay, think good. so. I think so. You could go you know? on and on, yeah. couldn't you? Yeah. It's yeah. Just, it, it's, yeah there's you many good things about it. I did want to mention these seven pits, the pitfalls of cannabis. Oh, yeah. Yes. But, I, but I think that, that Julie's going to bring up the... Should I do a few, pitfall, few fit, pitfalls? We can all think of the seven pitfalls of cannabis. One of them is the munchies. I think that that's a definite pitfall. We have to watch out for what we eat when we're, because we get that, that hunger. Then there is um, the um, paranoia. Some of us feel you know, a sense of paranoia a little bit. That can be a pitfall. Um, you have this um, insensitivity to your own boringness, you know, like going, going on too long. You know, like, 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 you know, it's a pitfall. You can walk around that one just by staying a little bit more conscious. But you also have a complete incoherence. There are people that become completely incoherent. You know, if you get too stoned, you can't really even say anything that sounds like, um, that makes any sense. Um, one of my, one of my uh, favorite ones is, uh, of a pitfall is not allowing cannabis to to be blamed for not being all you can be. You know, because I got high, because I got high, because I got high. Da, 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 da. Don't let it happen to you. You don't have to, because a lot of people are extremely productive with cannabis, so there's no excuse, and don't make cannabis the excuse. And then there is, well, short-term memory loss, you know. Uh, I forgot the rest of them, actually. So, so that's so that so that is the 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 pitfalls of cannabis, and just just you can just walk dance around those, and you can enjoy it very much. But who do we have to come up on the stage with us in a minute? Is Julie and Jeremy? Should we? Should, we're going to do a set change, which is the perfect time. Just have to tell you for this activity that we're going to ask you to do while we're doing the set change, and that is, you're going to look around, find somebody that you've never spoken to before, and introduce yourself to them, and kind of, you know, get to know them for just a few minutes while we do the set change. Okay? All right. No, I don't have a thing to uh, put. Yeah, so, you, you so it's like a little weird. Yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah, I like, what I do I do? You know, I, I, foot pedal, but I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I couldn't you do it. You seem okay. We'll make sure I, it's... I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I fell yes. off the other day. Oh. Oh. I, I just saw that. I was like, I need to push those down when we do a set change. You know, there may be another one in the other room now that we're going to talk Well, we have those two. Check one, two. Check one, two.
As one. As one. Come on, do it. Yes, as one. As one. As one. Yes. As one. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for returning. Yes. We have with us uh, the amazing uh, Julie Holland and Jeremy Wolf. We're so grateful. Uh, uh, that you could join us on 420 to talk about uh, and give us some uh, insight, uh, reflections on on this uh, special day and cannabis. It's great to be back here. Um, I, I, first, a question. You, you know, you put up there the official name of the drug, cannabis sativa. We all know what cannabis is. Who knows what sativa means? Ooh. Uh, sativa is more of a hint, like psychoactive. No, the, the literal word. meaning of the word what sativa. So the most. Sativa? No. So the most common word, uh, slang word for cannabis is weed. Sativa is, means cultivated. And uh, the, as, as these guys talked about, cannabis kind of co evolved with humans. And it's the, probably the first. Uh, example of agriculture, and there, there is no, there has, uh, there's been, they haven't been able to detect DNA of cannabis that doesn't show signs of cultivation. So, pretty much all of the cannabis you could say co-evolved with humans. So, sativa means cultivated. So I begin with that. I wanted to tell a really quick cannabis cup story. You guys, you guys reminded me of. Uh, Pretty early on when Jeremy and I were dating, but I think I went by myself. And um, they were gonna, I was going to give a talk at the Cannabis Cup in Amsterdam. And I said, please put me on as early in the day as you can so that I can be clear-headed. Well, uh, they were running very, very late. And by the time I went up to speak, I was not, I was, you know, when you're trying to judge cannabis strains, you will not end up clear-headed when it's your turn to speak. And I was up there talking, and there was no water up at the dais. And I'm talking, I'm talking, and I had, this was, a, this was one of the perils you didn't mention. The worst dry mouth I ever had in my life. And like my lips are up here, and I'm talking. It's kind of terrible. So not tonight. Um, there was a slide up there about stress being a big issue. And what it didn't directly say on that slide, Willie Nelson, was how specific cannabis can be for de-stressing us and for getting us out of fight and flight and over to what's called the parasympathetic. And I'm going to be talking a lot about sympathetic versus parasympathetic. Whenever Jeremy says something, I'm probably going to pipe, it, pipe in with how, how that relates. But uh, I imagine you all know it's better to not be in fight or flight. This, this is when you've got a lot of adrenaline and you can't sleep and you don't metabolize your food well and you get ulcers uh, and you get fat. 
Um, and also, your social skills are not very good when you're in fight or flight. You're either uh, arguing or you're running away. So the other side of that, the flip side, is uh, parasympathetic as opposed to sympathetic nervous system. And the parasympathetic is what helps you rest, digest, and repair. And cannabis helps to put you in parasympathetic so that you can de-stress, you could sleep, better for your metabolism, and not only does your body repair itself more in parasympathetic, but you can also repair your social relationships that you screwed up when you were in fight or flight. Speaking of screwing up social relationships, honey, what did you want to say next? Um, well, one, one thing that brought, brought up is, you know, the idea of paranoia is that that's, that, that is like a state, inf you know, state inf affected state that you know, the first time you, are, you go to Amsterdam, you realize that the laws and your environment affects um, how the drug is gonna, gonna affect you. So the paranoia, in a sense, is a natural um, response to the biggest danger of cannabis, which we taught our kids, which is legal. Um, if you grew up, uh, except, for, except for very recently. Um, something that I'd just like to say in the context of being with with these uh, friends and artists, is that I think of, I think of of cannabis as a, as our as like the emissary from the from the plant kingdom, and the experience of can cannabis is is experiencing the mind of plants, and that cannabis is the, the closest to us. It is dioecious, which means that it's male and female. It's about our height. It lives in all the places we live, um, and so we've had a long relationship with many plants, but I think this particular plant uh, really just matches every aspect of humanity. And what are the, what are the words? And, and just like us, uh, there's male and female, and when they cross-pollinate and make babies, it's like a genetic roll of the dice, just like it is when we make babies. And Except that, we don't kill all the males. <laughs> But it, and it is sort of a girl, a girl plower plant, like the discovery of, of, of the, the, you know, just cultivating the, the flowers. And I, I believe that the uh, suppression of cannabis was part of a gen general suppression of yin and, and the feminine. And that it's still kind of a self-repression. I call it like the Cheech and Chong hangover, that, that cannabis is still kind of um, in this silly world of, of gummies and stupid names and that it isn't taken as, you know, sort of, it remains desacralized in a way because of uh, the, the, the re recreational use and that it, that it, ha that it is, a, we believe it's, it is a psychedelic by any definition and that it can be um, used for, for all the uh, needful, useful things that, uh, that other psychedelics are used for. Right. Cannabis is like the people's psychedelic. It's the one that we have now. <laughs> Um, there are some psychedelics that I think are going to be very helpful to the field of psychiatry. They're not yet legal. Uh, the one that is available that already could be helpful is cannabis. And I really feel like we're sort of overlooking that, you know, this idea of psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. Um, this, is, this is a psychedelic that people can try and you can really titrate your dose and take a little bit or have a lot and have a psychedelic experience. And just in terms of pharmacology, uh, you know, the the psychedelic receptor, the serotonin 2A receptor that you're hearing a lot about, which is not the whole story. It's simply part of the story. But one interesting thing is that if you take enough THC, the cannabis receptor and the serotonin 2A receptor actually can form uh, what's called a dimer. The two receptors get together and they make something new. And so there's crosstalk between the endocannabinoid system and the serotonin system. So if anybody tries to argue with you that cannabis isn't a psychedelic, that is a, very much a losing argument. And pharmacologically, it, it's even more so. Yeah, and have them like swallow a few grams of hashish if they don't think it's a psychedelic. <laughs> um, something that I also think about cannabis is it's inherently subversive um, to, to our culture. And that, that has always been part of the opposition to it. Um, you know, going back to uh, artists and jazz musicians, um, and it's a threat to to alcohol culture, which is kind of the drug of capitalism, of of you know, rum, sodomy, and the lash. Um, that that you know, the day that Trump was elected, the good news was that all these ca cannabis initiative 
objectives pass, and hopefully, you know, that that the the the, ba the balance between cannabis culture and alcohol culture will really be a a, you know, a, a profound effect. Also, I. I think that the sort of pain reliever and anti-anxiety maker companies should also be a little nervous because I really, you know, when I first started being a psychiatrist, uh, cannabis was illegal. There was no medical marijuana in New York. I hate saying marijuana. I feel so weird in my mouth. There was no, there was no medical cannabis program. And, uh, and if I had patients who I thought could benefit from cannabis, which was many of them for all kinds of reasons, anxiety, insomnia, arthritis, diabetes, um, I didn't know how they could obtain their medicine, and I would end up sort of asking them if they knew any teenagers, and sometimes teenagers can be helpful in these situations, which is terrible for a doctor to have to do. So at least now we have a, a fair to middling medical cannabis program in New York. We are still all waiting for the real rollout of the adult use program. Um, but, uh, you know, I am here to tell you that not only would I say that you know, if you're listing a whole bunch of drugs, I would say cannabis is is good in terms of harm reduction. Um, you're less likely to die of an overdose than if you're buying counterfeit pills on the street, clearly. Um, you know, I, f I feel like uh, there are people who get addicted to medicines that are worse for them, and switching over to cannabis, at least you're giving them something that's anti-inflammatory. Um, that's not necessarily bad for your liver or your brain the way that alcohol is, that is less addictive than alcohol. Um, it's not totally non-addictive, and I think uh, many of us here, if we're really going to be honest, um, we could sometimes get into trouble with uh, desacralizing. What did you call it, honey? I think that was the word I made, I made up. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate that you that you say a blessing. Um, I also remember you guys were stopping for a while, and I remember being very proud of you and very surprised. Well, I do um, want to respond to that and say that we have stopped numerous times in our life. We've gone for large blocks of time without smoking. We didn't smoke during COVID because we got long COVID and it stopped us. So we stopped for a good long time using everything. But as our daughter was growing up, we stopped. Uh, before my pregnancy, before, you know, when we were going to try, you know, 18 months before, we gave up alcohol and every other thing. So, you know, it's very helpful to do that. And it's really great. I would certainly recommend giving it up a day a, a day a week would be you know we were we were 10 years though every day and every every morning noon and night now i'm a little more um selective but uh you know i, I we all go through this that's what i love about it too it's so forgiving it will let you do that speaking of forgiving it is it is the easiest plant to grow that there is you can you know it's really hard to fuck it up um, and that's one of the amazing things about us, because like, you know, the the true true uh, legality will be when anybody can just grow it easily, and which for me is like an herbal herbal model. It's much more in the category of like basil or coffee um, that that is easily easily growable and difficult to to charge money for. I mean, people are managing to figure out ways to make money, not not yeah. as much as they had hoped to, but. You don't, you don't have to because it, it's easy and it's really fun to you grow. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm thinking about, so uh, I'm, I'm the medical monitor on some research programs. I was, uh, for some of the early MDMA PTSD studies, I was medical monitor. And then I was also medical monitor for a cannabis PTSD study. And uh, we had a lot of veterans who were interested in figuring out what we wanted to figure out, which is whether high THC, high CBD, or a one-to-one, -one, what would be best for their symptoms. Um, and then we got what um, Sue Sisley and I referred to lovingly as the, um, the research drug from the government. It didn't look like any cannabis I would ever want to consume or even like, you know, my son would want to consume. It was like really like, you know, twigs and stems and seeds and, and brown. Um, and we tested it for mold and it did not come clean like we would think. It was just, it was terrible study drug. And, uh, uh, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I really felt like our government was making it really hard for us to show them that cannabis could be medicinal and helpful. So that to me was one of the sort of perils. Um, the, the drug policy in our country has been pretty hypocritical and not really related to any kind of science or pharmacology. And the DEA is not in the position to practice medicine and they have way too much control over how I practice medicine at the moment. 
Um, what else so did it you is, want it to is, talk about? There is this incredible hypocrisy that it is basically legal and used in most of the country, but it still remains Schedule One, which is just hypocritical. And how do you teach children about what is right and wrong or what is what drugs to truly be afraid of if there is no uh, modeling of right. reasonable uh, behavior. And we, yeah. we experienced that at home in our house with our children when, when we were so used to hiding. And there was, there was some time when you know, our son was very young and he asked you... Yeah, Joe was like 12 and he was like, I totally get what you're talking about. I get drugs. I understand. There's just this thing I don't understand. I was like, what? And he said, why do you have to hide it? And I was just like, whoa, <laughs> like out of the mouths of babes. Because when you hide something, um, first of all, you can't uh, learn from any peer support. You can't model healthy behavior. Um, there's a lot of adrenaline that comes with hiding and there's shame. And all of that makes you uncomfortable. Um, and you're going to use more of the drug to regulate you. So, uh, you know, our, I've been saying for years, like, our drug policy is turning us into junkies. It's not based on harm reduction. It's not based on anything practical. And uh, during, during COVID, when the family was forced back into the house, one of the things I sort of demanded was like, no more of this don't ask, don't tell. And, you know, we all, I mean, I'm not gonna be too specific because uh, my kids in college and maybe watching this, um, but, but we just said like, you know, you know where the bong is, we know where the bong is, we're just gonna, get this over with and do it together. And it was, it was weird how hard it was, you know, like this kind of weird barrier, and, um, but it was pretty easy to break through. Yeah. <laughs> Should we sing our song? Yeah, is it time for that? You intro, I'm gonna tune your guitar while you intro the song. This is my, yeah. this is my tuner. She, she can re be replaced by a $12 snark at any time. Oh, well, yeah, we, I mean, we went, went through a long phase of uh, listening to Pogue's songs, for example, which have which amazing drinking songs, and we just thought there should be an equivalent cannabis song, so we wrote one. Ooh, smoking song. Smoking song. You're in tune, honey. I'm in tune. You are. Oh, and the other thing about this song, which you're going to love. Oh, right. Is can you fix your, I will. your mic? I will. Um, is it's a sing-along, which yeah. is everybody's favorite. Yeah. Oh, good, oh, good. Participatory. Who doesn't love a good sing-along? I know, because everyone feels so comfortable and relaxed when they sing in front of other people, right? Oop, I'm going to sit right next to you. Okay. Do you want to play the part they're going to learn? <coughs> First, got to get my guitar. Is it coming through? Yeah. So your part is happy again, happy again. Is it wrong to be happy again? That's it. Got it? So try one more time, everybody. Happy again, happy again. Is it wrong to be happy again? Okay. So I might it's not want you wrong. To, I want my, you to hold this in case I'm too nervous and forget the words, you, which the I know. The words aren't, aren't on here. Yes, they're at the bottom. Yeah. All right, fine. <laughs> When my girl left me, she made sure I'd be a man who would marry no more. What she said to me, I could never repeat. No, not since the death of me ma. Now, 14 long years is a very long time to carry the grudge I was given. But for 13 of them, she was with other men, and now I am told to forgive them. Happy again, happy again, is it wrong to be happy again? Now I could look in your eyes, but you'd merely despise a man with a childish emotion. But going down deep, that comes easy to me, for I've lived by the sea and the ocean. So I found a pipe, and I found a bowl, and a bag that I thought I'd forgotten. 
And I'm getting stoned and I'm writing a song Is it wrong to be happy again? Happy again, happy again Is it wrong to be happy again? Well, I had a dream my ma came to me, she said, you're not the boy I remember. You were busy and free, and you loved to climb trees. And as high as you were, you were clever. But now your eyes are cast down, and that's not just a frown. It appears to be your endeavor. But that was a dream, and dreams are not real, and nothing will last here forever so i found a pipe and i found a bowl and a bag that i thought i'd forgotten and i'm getting stoned and i'm writing a song is it wrong to be happy again happy again happy again is it wrong to be happy again Cause I just got stoned and I wrote down this song Is it wrong to be happy again? Thank you. Jeremy's written two chapters on cannabis. They're both called Thoughts on Pot, with thoughts spelled T-H-O-T-S. Uh, one, Thoughts on Pot, first one was in a book I did called The Pot Book. And then his second one, Lessons from the Leaf, Thoughts on Pot 2, is in Cannabis and Spirituality, if you'd like to learn more. And my latest book is called Good Chemistry, and it's all about oxytocin and MDMA and all kinds of psychedelic wonderfulness, and the word soul is even in it. Wow. Is that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's, let's give it a hand again. Thank you so much, Jeremy. That was so wonderful. I love you. I love you. That was so wonderful. Aren't they wonderful? They're just fantastic. We're so honored, and uh, we've met in many places in the world, have we not? My friends, we really have. Wow. We've been in many places in the world together, and I am so grateful that you came. So anyway, here we are, ready to do, what? Yes, Amanda. Amanda. Uh, Sage is here. Why are we taking and, both mics? Oh, she has a mic. Okay, good, very yeah. good. And uh, Sage. we uh, felt like, what a remarkable opportunity <clears throat> that, uh, that uh, Amanda, who is a board member of COSM here, oh, and who's here been a comes. teacher uh, here. Amanda! Amanda! Oh, God, Amanda. Amanda just taught an amazing class. Anybody here from that class? Testify, testify. Was it gorgeous? Was it incredible? It was, wasn't it? It, always, it never fails, Amanda. Your, te your classes are incredible. And I hope that everyone has seen her amazing painting, which is on display in the All One Gallery right downstairs, the amazing Anna Surimai. So thanks for being with us today, Amanda. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. Wow. So good to be here with all of you. Well, Amanda, how's it going? Tell us a little bit about what's going on with Amanda. I want to have some uh, reflections on the day, on uh, like the significance, if, can if any, that cannabis has had in your life. And also uh, tell us about, your, uh, about the new uh, phase. This is year four for the Vision Train, which uh, what a remarkable, uh, Woo -hoo! what a, rem yeah. a remarkable gift that you brought to the world and, and uh, to the visionary uh, artists around the world. So we love you. We appreciate your being back to teach and, and uh, 
So how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. I heard that today is actually one of the best astrological days of the year. And in terms of there being um, unexpected blessings uh, in our midst in a very tangible and lasting way, potentially. So pay, pay attention to that, maybe. And I, um, wow, I'm doing great, to be honest. Sometimes on my, my birthday was yesterday. And <laughs> it's, it's a bit of an auspicious, auspicious day. I've uh, found out over the years. And sometimes, I don't know how you feel on your birthday, but sometimes I feel like hiding and being very introspective and contemplating mortality. But this, this time felt really, there's such an invitation of blooming and blossoming. And, and this, around us, the, the land around us is just blooming. And we just had this experience of six days, five, six days, really diving deep into the blooming of our creativity in a collective here in the art lab, here in a workshop, painting with light. And it was, oh, it's just always a reignition for me of the power of community when we come together and we do something together, something that each of us is contributing. We're, we're drawing out our visions and we're doing it though collectively, like together, supporting each other listening to the same music, being in the same space. And it's such a liberating thing. Oh my God, it feels like uh, our souls are hungry for it. Like it's, it feels natural actually. It's a communion with others. And it's one of the things when I think about the liberation of cannabis, I think the, the liberation of art and us as artists, like somehow it really goes hand in hand. I've met so many people through this vision train drawing project, which has been something that I've been doing with people for quite a few years. I invite people to draw out their vision, and this is anybody, this is all of you. It's an invitation, draw out your vision in a train car. It's a little template, it's like you're in kindergarten, it's a coloring project. And, and so many people will say, respond to me, oh, I can't draw. Like how many of you would respond that way? Now, it's going to be a lower number in this crew, probably. You guys are more adventurous and more, like, there's a bunch of artists here for sure that identify that way, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't identify as artists or being, like, even... And so I see this liberation of the creative spirit being a huge part of this responsibility towards uh, planetary healing, <laughs> collective healing, like on just a really big scale. And I think the plants are there to support us. I mean, that's how they've related with me and what they've told me. They're, hey, we got your back, girl. <laughs> and I've, I've experienced that. So I, I appreciate the, the freedom right now to be able to speak about this and to be able to be in community about this and to continue to explore in a safe environment maybe what we're here for and how we can remember and heal, you know, through just like our following our, the, the song of our hearts. Oh my God, I'm feeling free to do that. Anybody here do, go to ecstatic dance? Like, and do movement, you know, it's like holding space together where you feel you, you're liberated. We're doing that tonight. Yeah. A after the ceremony. <laughs> And we gotta have a fire. Dance around the it's fire. Like, you can dance in the yeah. in the library. It's essential, dance. like these things. And so what you two have done, it's been so inspiring to be a part. And I got to meet these two actually 15 years ago today. Wow, oh no, really. yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. It was your birthday. Was for, it, was, it happened to be my birthday, and it was at the East West Gallery in New York, and they were doing a talk on Bicycle Day, and I happened to be in the area. I was kind of one of those crazy uh, synchronistic moments. But I just feel so blessed to be a part of this community, and I feel like with this knowing that the, uh, the stars are really in our favor right now, let's bring it on. What's the unexpected miracle that is coming your way right now, you know, that is going to be tangible and lasting, and I'm inviting that in through the connections tonight and us all being here, and, you know, what is our calling? What are we here to fulfill and to do? And I feel really strong right now and deep about the vision train. Mm, yes. I do. Yes. And the vision train celebrated is there's multiple um, 
kind of ways that the vision train is expressing currently, and one is through this vision train drawing project. That's something that you're all, I don't think we have any templates printed out tonight. But Maybe where can, can they find them? Visiontrain.org. There you go. Get on board. But then you can also get on the, the nonstop Vision Train Global Art Jam, which has been going for four years. And that is happening on Zoom. And that's a Zoom call that has been going literally for four years. Same one. Just get on visiontrain.org and it says hop on board or get on board. You click it. You have to be signed into your Zoom account because there's no other security setting on it. And you might, there's, there's scheduled things happening every day. There's something going on, but you can get on any time and there could be a renegade jam happening. And those are sometimes the best. So we, like, no, we train each other to play music so it sounds good on Zoom. And you get together in your jam. You make art, maybe somebody's playing a podcast, or maybe there's a skill share. And there's artists all over the world that are getting on there and jamming together. Like we have a whole crew in India. We have a whole crew in Brazil and Iran in South America, in Mexico, and I mean, Australia. I'm gonna forget all the places because they're all the places, but the visionary artists are all over the world. And you guys have been talking about this for years and going around and educating so awesomely, you know, as part of your mission and vision of Cosm and, and then building this place, I mean. But then it was, the, it was, it was, the, it was the sequestration of COVID that you know, yeah. brought it up for you, for that sure. you should open this Zoom room to interactive, interactive art making, that you could yeah. make art 24 hours a day wherever you were in the world with other people. Because they're up when you're sleeping in Australia, and there's a big crew in Australia. So, so there's, so there's uh, this, really, this real opportunity to, to be with Amanda's crew, and sometimes with Amanda on the vision train. But you know, I really see this not as, it, it's not my train. Like, not it's- anymore. No, it's our train. I just heard, I've just heard the whistle at a certain time and did what I could. <laughs> I see it, though, even bigger. I see this as a real, we're going to build a real train, guys. I mean, you hear it every now and then down there? No, we're going to have a real train. We're going to have multiple real trains. Yeah, well, the train it's, is the you, best You just have to, to make it the vision train. Well, and come by and see. I'm going to be painting in the house, in the parlor, yes. with Rosie. And we're going to be doing sand mandala and stuff. And um, I have some cards of this train, this painting called The Great Wave of Trains Formation. And that one talks about the even bigger meta vision of the train being the symbol to carry all of the goods and all of the beauty and all of the awesomeness back on the tracks on a journey of regeneration and reconciliation and remembrance. And a great gift, right? Flowering, just all the beautiful a flowering like song. And there's been songs, this is a prophecy really. It's come through songs and stories and stuff. And I just think it's a great one to to commit to. So I committed to it and doing what I could. So it, you'll see trains in a lot of my paintings too. And I just invite all of you to get on board. Like what's your part of this story, you know, and to get ready, you know? There's many different, I mean, we can get on the train, we can fall off the train, but we can always get back on. And we can put our hands together like this, like little couplers. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, you're such a card. And, and yeah, we love it, we love it. And, we're in, and you really, gave a space for a lot of people who got very lonely during COVID, and it's continuing. It's continuing. It's in its fourth year. Oh, it doesn't want to stop. And it will not stop. So we might as well so get on board. Go for it. <laughs> Paint with people. There are people on there painting. Definitely. Yeah. That's right. And, you know, the, the workshops happen on there, too. You want to learn how to paint? You want to sharpen your skills? You can come have a little workshop, you know, just to get into it. Or you can, and then eventually dive into the in real life workshops. And Allison's teaching a workshop coming up here real well, soon. I do have a workshop coming up, but I'm going to talk about that later. But, but it is a place where if you are on there and there are other artists on there, you can get advice too. Oh my God, yeah. We have to construct Look at this. I'm, you hold it up Tuesdays. to the camera. But tomorrow, well, we'll talk about our, our program uh, after this. But I just wanted to tell you how much we're grateful. This is your second uh, class you've taught here in a year, and you always draw a lot of very appreciative and happy uh, campers. So you know, uh, we're really, really so lucky and so fortunate. You know, we, I, w I wanted to thank you also for uh, being generous at the Texas Eclipse and 
having the vision train area of uh, the camp there at the uh, uh, that haven, you know, um, open its uh, arms for an art church. Right. So, uh, you, you, so we thank collaborated you. It was so great, perfectly. It was a great uh, coincidence. Yeah, we did of art our, church at the, uh, the eclipse and in, yeah. in the space where Amanda was doing the trains. So we like, Many we really trains got to of collaborate. thought got together. Yeah, 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 and we got these hubs. I'm sure some of you have some of these places where people gather, right? And come and, and, and share the goods, <laughs> you know, and then everybody right scatters here. back out again, just like we do here at Cosm. Just right there is yeah. where we do it all the time. Well, anyway, thank Yay, you so thank much, you. Amanda, everybody. Thank you. Amanda Sage, great artist. Fantastic. Well, this is the time that we do the blessings and declarations, and it's the perfect time, too, because what you're saying, Amanda, really segues right into this. I mean, a, a blessing, we know what a blessing is. A blessing is when you bless something, and you, you, know, you may want to be blessed or bless somebody else or something else, a, per a birthday, an anniversary. But also, there's the declaration is a possibility in this next segment. And so the declaration is what we were talking about. The intention. If you have an intention, and you, and you utter it to your community of, of supportive people, people that want you to have what you want in your life and yourself. Um, so you, you declare that and it empowers it because you see these people and if you come back month after month too, it empowers it because you look and you see what have I accomplished toward my intention and what am I going to accomplish before the next full moon. So you can, you can, you can kind of use it, we have all over the years, as a little, like, baby steps towards the big things that we really want, like the chapel. And here yeah. we are. Look Whoa. at us. Right. So, so um, we want to keep it brief and essentialized. Yeah, yeah. Um, under two and, minutes. Yeah, and uh, can we add that uh, uh, if uh, someone wants to uh, state their appreciation for cannabis or something like that and, as and, well? And your intention. Just, I'd say yeah. both. I'd okay. say, you know, you know. Right. Those would be good good topics if you want to bless or or to thank cannabis for any particular thing, and also, um, you know, if you wanted to share an intention, that would be fine or a blessing. So really great. Who's going to be first? We've given you some time to think about oh, it. There's somebody okay. over There's there. There's a friend oh. over here. And somebody oh, yeah. over there. Okay. We'll start. We'll be next. Okay. We'll start here. Okay. You want to go here? And stand okay. up. Say your name. Hey everyone. I'm Dan. And I've always been grateful to cannabis, but also to a psychedelic mushroom I took last weekend, which helped me really reset my brain chemistry and really get over a lot of things that have been troubling me for a long time. Like, I've never felt genuinely happier, and I just want to redefine love and what it means for me and how I express it. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Awesome. Well wow. said. Should I go over here? Okay, yes, yes. He's, yeah. There she comes. Alexa, sprinting. Hello, Alexa and everybody here at Cosm. Hello, Alex yeah. and Allison. Always a pleasure to see you once again. Good to see you. My name is Gennaro Lombardi. Yeah. And um, my declaration, well, I've been smoking cannabis for 30 years. My first time smoking was at 13 years old, and I'm 43 years old. And it's done me justice over the years many, many times. But sometimes if something doesn't serve you, you have to stop. So I've taken long periods of breaks, you know? And then sometimes I go back to it, and it always helps me express myself. Um, artistically. And this is what I was, my declaration for this is um, for everybody that's an artist in the room or inspiring to be an artist, I'm now a writer of five books and stuff like that. So I never really thought of myself as an artist, right? I'm just like, oh, I'm just a writer. I'm just a plumber. I'm just a pizza man. But everybody is an artist as long as you have passion for what you do in life. You know, if you, if you make a plate of food and you put it in front of somebody and you use passion to make that plate of food, you designed it, you're an artist, somebody that made this building. Alex puts passion into his, into his paintings. And uh, that's me and my, my, my thing. I'm a writer, I'm a creative writer, and um, that's my art. You know, I didn't really think of myself as an artist, and uh, I'm pretty, I've made a pretty good name for myself now, so that's it. So your art should always come from your heart. And as long as well, you have passion, Thank you, Gennaro. You and, and, and Allison puts her passion into her art too, Gennaro. Yeah. Thanks so much. Anyway, um, <laughs> who is going to give a blessing or a declaration? Oh, here's somebody. Okay, I'm doing like sprints back and forth this time. Here we go. 
Hi, everybody. I go by Tanner. I'm glad to be here tonight. Uh, I'd like to share my intention uh, is to stay in a state of awe and wondrous curiosity and remain the observer of the beauty in and the beauty around me. Um, <clears throat> and special thanks to the marijuana spirit. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That was so beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, you got to run all the way. Oh, wait, we have one here. I can, in, in, I can hit here first on the way. Okay, you're going first. Hello, everybody. My name is Michael. Um, I would like to give a blessing to all of the uh, wonderful marijuana plants that exist in our world and um, how much love and um, excitement it has brought me in this world and this life. And I also would like to, at the same time, bless all the other plants that exist on our planet. Because I was walking out in the Wisdom Trail today and these beautiful little plants were radiating this love and light and I said, wow, you know, this is, what a fortune we have to be in this world. How lovely it is to be in this, you know, amazing soup of energies that come from every direction and make us all what we are, this palette of beauty and, you know, loving humans. So bless us all for being part of this amazing, you know, paradigm that we created for ourselves. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Mike. Thank you, Dr. Mike. Where am I going? Over there, all the way over there. I'll walk over there, okay. Hi, y'all. My name is Eddie. This is my first time here. This place is absolutely amazing, inspiring. I'd like to bless all of y'all for being here and doing what you do. And I'd like to share a little poem with you, if that's all right. That's perfect, do that. It's called uh, Mystery Roads. We are here now, living on this earth. Our mission is to learn what life is worth. Exploring our own roads, looking for what entices, with our love to share, along with our vices. Creating and influencing the choices we make. Every now and then, the turn that we take leads us to something we did not expect. These roads that we travel are mostly indirect eventually coming around to a new beginning, learning that none of us are loving, losing or winning. While you traverse your mystery roads, only you can decide which way you will go. Please remember to take it slow, get in the groove, go with the flow, always trying to improve what you know. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. All right. Beautiful. Oh, there's somebody right there. Okay, we're going to pass it back. I'm going to do a little... Oh, okay. Reach. Hi, I'm Pete. Uh, I've spoken a couple of times here, but I do want to uh, thank the sacred herb cannabis, or as one of my friends calls it, the devil's lettuce. Um, <laughs> through 20 years of, of suicidal ideation, it really did save my life and, and was medicine that, that kept me going on a lot of nights where, where my world was otherwise uh, too dark to accept. I would also like to thank uh, MDMA because it was MDMA therapy and talk therapy with a, a couple of, of very wise and helpful friends that helped me overcome the, the trauma and learn to really talk about and express and be open about uh, the things that, that fed the childhood trauma and pain that, that fed those 20 years of, of severe depression and also uh, the other sacred substances, uh, acid and DMT in particular, which helped me to, to get over my own intellectual bullshit and accept that there is more to the reality than the reality before our eyes and more to things than science can tell us and that we are all one and everything is one. And that we are all, uh, as, as the Kabbalah would teach us, stones off the mountain that is God. And we are the same substance as that mountain. And uh, of course, I also need to, to bless and thank you too because I say in, in all of my shares in, in other contexts in recovery, because uh, even though those things have helped me so much, I also uh, needed to learn, as Alan Watts said, that the, the scientist does not glue his eye to the microscope and that when you get the message, you put the phone down. And I was too in love with the phone and the, and the medicine to, to realize that I just needed to, to live life 
on life's terms in a lot of ways. And I, I also need to thank you because at every one of my shares in the other recovery programs I go to and when I was in rehab, uh, I have learned to say that I truly hear uh, my higher power and my understanding of God in every other living being, especially every other human being. And I truly believe that we are all sacred mirrors reflecting the light of divinity back at each other. So namaste, and God bless, and thank you. Everyone's crushing it so far. What a bunch of incredibly deep and, and profound messages we're getting today. There's somebody right back there, Alexa. Not, not that, you know, no pressure, though. <laughs> All right, hello, everyone. My name is Morgan. I uh, just wanted to thank you guys. Actually, my first time, like, smoking pot, I watched a Tool music video, so... <laughs> Literally full circle moment for me. Weed has just been so amazing for me in my life. I used to just be a really shy kid, really shy person, really inward. And I smoked weed and it kind of opened me up to just to be more yourself, you know, and holding that light and being yourself, it will attract the people that are meant for you. Because if you are trying to you know, be someone you're not to appease everyone, you're gonna appease no one. So I just wanna bless weed and I'm just so thankful that it's legal now, like we all should celebrate and uh, I've just been so happy to see the progression of weed and the climate around it progress and yeah, just thank you guys. <laughs> thank you, beautifully said. I got one right here. Right, right there. I don't have to go anywhere. Yeah, stand on up. Hi, everybody. My name is Elaine. I've got two messages, blessings I wanted to put out there. We lost a family kitty this week, so I wanted to send some love to the transition of Peanut Soul to the other side. And that being Aww. said, um, I wanted to send love, grounding, and connection to anybody experiencing grief in any capacity, whether it's recent or however long it's been since you've experienced your loss. It's something that connects and unifies us all along with love as well. So grief can be painful, but always bring it back to love. And then it was also my birthday the other day. So um, I also wanted to open up the energy and bless you all with uh, abundance and beautiful new energy with every fresh and vital breath that you take. So thank your lungs for breathing for you throughout the day. Thank your feet for walking you through life. And thank each other for sharing this beautiful experience. Namaste to everybody. Thank you. How about, if we, how, about if, how about if we just stop right here for one second, just for one moment, and everybody take a deep breath and yeah. say, ah. Okay. Should we do one or three? Three ahs, everybody. OK, here we go. Right? Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, you know, we do that before we eat. We don't do ahs. We just breathe, though. Three breaths. It's really good. You know, just, you know, the, what's going in you is going to be more happy. Anyway, um, should so we do, should we see yeah, what Katie, 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 Katie has something? Katie might have a few. On the internet. Uh, on, These are from yeah. our friends from afar. Yeah. Who do we have today, Katie? Hey friends, everyone online is very excited about this theme of the high holidays. <laughs> we have viewers from Mexico and Finland and Florida, Thailand, Canada, all over the US, just so incredible. 
All thanks to our audiovisual team. I always want to give them a shout out in the back. <laughs> they are so cool. Okay, first we have a blessing from Jacob in Ohio. He says, a blessing of liberation for everyone. Let us over overcome all qualms and hindrance from internal battles within ourselves. Hmm. And second, we have Casey from Michigan. Another blessing. She says, the divine feminine is rising. Mother nature loves you. She reminds you to relax, breathe deep, and be you. Beautiful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, yeah. Katie. 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 Katie, our, our social media maven. H how about a hand for the COSM staff Have and support here? <laughs> Thank you for making it happen, for all the support that's out there. Yeah. Well, as we are hearing, too, tonight we may be thinking of loved ones, maybe even ourselves, who might be suffering distress in body or mind. Every cosm full moon, we take a few moments to turn inside and hold in our heart those that might benefit from a healing prayer. To strengthen this blessing, we call the name of your loved ones as we pray. Great Spirit, thank you for blessing us with this day and for our precious body and soul. We feel the light of spirit shining in our hearts. And as we breathe, a glow expands to surround us like a luminous sphere. The brightness in our hearts magnifies as we join together in a gleaming web with countless others around the world, a luminous net of beings from the superabundance of our combined energy field, we envision rays of healing light surrounding and protecting us, our friends and family. May the light shine on all who need healing. May spirit renew each soul with creative power to rebuild stronger and weave peace and harmony across the earth. May the water, air, fire, and earth be purified, and the web of life be strong and resilient. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Well, some who are with us may be grieving the loss of a family member or a friend. We send our deep condolences to all who are in mourning. We acknowledge the sacred space of sorrow and compassion that we carry for all those suffering on our planet. Remembering the brevity of life, we appreciate the beauty of every precious day. Almighty Spirit, we remember the souls of beloved ones who have passed on. Cherishing them in our heart, they remain close to evoke their memory now, we call their names as we reflect together for a moment in silent prayer, sending a wave of love from our being to theirs. And we say, may their may memory the, be, a be a blessing. Yes. Well, now we have the exciting moment where we invite Alexa up on the stage to 
Tell us all about the future news, Alexa. I'm going to sit the, in this the chair. Future, Alexa? Look at this chair. This is nice. You get a chair. How's everyone doing? We're good. Just a second. I'm going to get my uh, reading glasses out. One second here. Oh. Yeah, man, we're ready to groove now. They're, they're not prescription, they're just... Rose-colored. Uh, Rose-colored, yeah. Exactly. How are you two doing? Well, we're doing so great. <laughs> There's so much going on here, isn't there? Oh, Alexa? the fun never stops. We just, we just keep it going. We just keep the bread in the oven. Take it out, put new bread in. We do, we do. The we sourdough. Every day for something everyone. more exciting than or the next. Brownies. So, or so brownies. Yeah. yeah, we like brownies, we do. So we have the after party going on after this. You betcha we have the after party. We're just getting started. So uh, are, we, are we ready to rock and roll in the group? Okay. That's good. It's funny looking at you guys with these glasses on. I'm just say, realizing you look beautiful. Uh, you did before as well. Um, after the ceremony concludes, hang out for a little bit, explore Entheon. But then, uh, you know, we got a whole other building in and outside we got a bonfire, we got fire spinning, we got the gray house, we have some music tonight, we got, uh, oh, Alien TV, where's my, hold up, I got my, it's like a masquerade with Alien TV here, oh, yeah, yeah, courtesy of my boy Patrick, so we got music with Alien TV, and then Antenne is going to be dropping some beats as well, so like we said, we love ecstatic dance here, we do, and we're going to make that happen Get down with your bad self if you'd like. And uh, again, be sure to wander around the Grey House, catch some live painting by Amanda Sage, Cam Man, Harry Pack, Rosie Rose, Brynja Magnuson, and uh, oh, I have Harry Pack written twice, so I guess you cloned yourself, my guy. You're going to be painting twice tonight. We also have the uh, Community Sand Mandala, so that is a space for you to make it drizzle with some sand and set some creative intentions. You two and you two will kind of kickstart it. Yeah, we do. We start it out, come on over. What time what, does it what start, time Rosie? Is, uh, we you, leave about a half like an hour to, uh, between here and there. Yeah, around like nine. That. Yeah. Yeah. We'll call you. Come on over and start a sand mandala with us. Yeah. <laughs> and then at the end, what do we do? We shovel that to the center. 11.15, 11.30. We'll, uh, we'll uh, get the shovel. The dissolution, it's the dissolution yes. of the sand mandala. It's to practice non-attachment. So we make something beautiful and then we dissolve it and we all take a little bit of it home and put it in our garden for good luck because it's all made of crystals, so the sand. So we, we do that, it's a good, a good, you can spend part of your evening sitting there and doing a little sand mandala. Ours is on our altar. We, ours is on oh my God! No way! So is mine. Every <laughs> sand mandala we've ever done with Rosie and Mike, we have a little bit of sand on our altar. Yes. So we that's do. very fun, and thank you for just holding it down all these years with the sand mandala. It's just a staple here. Uh, get your body painted or your face painted by Dramessa, or indulge in a mystic tarot reading by Joseph Montepagani. 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 There it is. You can, he, he had me say it like 50 times. It's very fun to say. Joseph Montepagani. You can sign up for both of those in the Gray House shop. We have an Entheon shop downstairs, but we also have another gift shop in the Gray House. You can sign up for that over there. I'm assuming 1 to 70 of us have the munchies tonight, so if you got that going, we got food for you. Don't, don't you worry about it. We got baked goods. We got some delicious CBD beverages, uh, sandwiches, curry bowls. And uh, enjoy yourself. And the indulge. music is happening in the library. Is that correct? The music is happening in the Moon Lounge. In the Moon Lounge. Yes. In the Moon Lounge. Sorry. Yes. But you'll find it. It's all right. on the first that floor. That sounds fabulous. Over yeah, the there. Whole, the, whole, the whole building over there the is whole building. full of fun. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, what else we got? Um, like I said, bonfire. It's so beautiful tonight, today. We got such good weather. Thank God. So we'll be uh, sparking that up outside. Fire spinning. Amazing yes, spinning. troop of drummers that came. Drummers. Yes, that's correct. Brian, Brian's drum crew. Um, so definitely um, have a moment by the fire, you know. If you, need, if you need to just get some fresh air and ground out, a fire is the best television, in my humble opinion. Uh, there's always something on there. It's always changing. Um, if you have, speaking about grounding out, if you have any questions or if you need assistance, if you need anything at all, Come find people rocking one of these Johnsons right here, one of these badges, 
And um, even if you're just like, where's the bathroom? Like, we'll, we'll, we'll point you in the right direction, and we're here to support you. Make sure you're drinking lots of water, stay hydrated. Um, this is a space for all of us, and we want to have a good time tonight. Uh, Bag and coat check in Entheon will end around like 10, 10.30. So if you don't grab your things beforehand, we're going to transport those baddies over to the Gray House, and you can pick it up there. Um, don't, we, don't we like, it if, if people are going to smoke, that they smoke in the designated smoking areas? Um, yeah, 100 to 200 feet away from... That's all. That's all it is. Yeah. 200 feet away from Entheon, and uh, you're, you're okay. Yeah. Be cool. Be, outside, be cool. Be uh, cool. That's, outside, that's what we really, will say about that. We don't want to get in people's faces, but you know, we all love you, and you know, that's fine. Go New York. Um, <laughs> we love New York. Okay. Anyways, let's see. Well, tomorrow, you know, we have everything going on tonight, but tomorrow we're going to be doing some art church. You kind of mentioned it. I just want to say one thing, though. Please. At the end of the evening, we're going to howl at the moon. Of course. And uh, if you stay till the sweet, sweet end, we'll probably meet down by the fire since it's such a gorgeous night. We or could. should we meet inside? Well, typically we meet inside, but so meet inside, but you know, if we'll we want. We'll meet inside. If we get squirrely, we'll go outside. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll but. see. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to meet and we're going to howl at the moon before we say goodbye. And that, that is the, the end. You know, you keep the end in mind. It's always good to keep the end in mind. That's the end of the evening. And, and then tomorrow, as you were saying, uh, yeah, what was I church. saying? Oh, yeah, our church, of course. Our yeah, church we got our church at 3 to 5. And wh what do we do at our church? Well, Explain. our church is the most awesome uh, event, and it's very intimate, but it is, it's not very intimate. It's, you know, the, the, it's art, substantial. the art lab fills, and we do it in the art lab, and it's, we make art together, and we listen to music of a theme. Now, I just want to say the theme tonight, again, like, and this whole month, is liberation. Yeah. And it's liberation for so many reasons. But um, I just wanted to wish everybody here who is going to start having Passover on Monday a happy liberation Passover because it is all about liberation. And in, in a metaphorical sense, that is about the mind, the cognitive liberty. And it's also about the liberation from all suffering, you know, really that we can possibly uh, have in our lifetime where, where life is suffering. But we, we do, we, the liberation from that is what we celebrate around Passover. It's, it's the liberation from addiction, the liberation from fear and stress and upset and, and all kinds of negativities. So we try to remember, you know, what's really at the core of Passover. And so I just wanted to, you know, wish everybody happy and, and safe and, and uh, I don't know, fulfilling Passover. That's, that's beautiful to remember. And uh, that, uh, I mean, we can look at the, uh, the grounds and how they're coming alive, you know, and how there's so many blooms as we that's walk right. around the grounds. You know, this is the time, you know, uh, to walk around and feel your embeddedness and your, your connection, your alignment with the season and with the, the blossoming, it's a time of renewal. So can you hook, you know, something that you're doing, you know, to that, or what, what could uh, help, you know, be infused with that energy of springtime, you know? So I think that's the liberating uh, message, you know, the creative energy that's in life, that's springing up all around. You two are just like so good at this whole thing that you no, do up here, good. I have you're to good. say. No, but I, I love that. Thank you for those, th yeah, that sentiment. But I, I, in, in just touching back on Passover for one more second, I wanted people to know that if that they don't know, that Passover is the passing over of the angel of death in the face of whatever ugliness is going on around mm -hmm. them. You know, there was a lot of ugliness, but the angel of death passed over. So, I mean, it's the, it's the celebration of life, really. Because we're alive, so we celebrate being here now in this beautiful, beautiful springtime and uh, how, mm -hmm. how fortunate we are. Yeah, so anyway, but then, but then so there's... So I'm there's, all gassed over here. You guys oh are just hyping God. me up, I'm just saying. 
So that's so that's the liberation. We're going to celebrate yeah. that at our church. Yeah, we're our make church. art that's about right. it. And if yeah. you would rather make poetry about it or journal about it, mm -hmm. you know, you do that. But we have a wonderful playlist about liberation, and we're going to like go into silence. It's a, it's a meditation, and we make art for a little while, and then we talk about it. Yep. Then we chat a lot. We chat it. Yeah, we do. For sure. Can't so, wait to hear that playlist. So that's was that. You can join on Zoom. I'm so glad, yes, ominous man in the back, you asked oh, that question. Oh, Tor, thank you. Yes. Yes, if you're out there and, 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 or you can't make it tomorrow, whatever, to the on-site uh, art church, which is superb, and you should try to make it sometime. <laughs> but do join us on Zoom. You can join, join us uh, as a member. You can participate on Zoom. And as a future member, you can audit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So see what it's like, and maybe you'll become a member, and then you can be part of you know, our church as a full participant, but you can log on as a, as a future member as well. So we want you to see whether it's something that you'd like to do. And really, membership is a stand. Let me tell you what a membership is for, at COSM. It's a stand for this place continuing and existing. You know, The call to action is, what if this place didn't exist? It does. So help us to continue that by becoming a member and being a stand. We have a really strong and growing membership right now. And you get to be in the Mighty Networks. You get to you know, show your art and play your music and write your poetry and share it with people. It's like an ongoing, ever and continuous literary magazine with audio visual included. It's really fun like that. You can really just like log on to the Mighty Networks and see what your friends uh, at our church and other places are doing. So anyway, it's a nice way to get to know more. Throw members. that membership plug. I yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah. It's literally it's so legit. You can learn more at uh, cosm.org/membership. Yeah. And um, the last thing I have to say is just you know we uh, we obviously host these full moon gatherings and celestial celebrations, but we also are like totally a learning institution, and we have a lot of amazing workshops coming up. We have one next weekend. I'm starting yeah. a workshop. It's a five day workshop with four guest speakers, Alex being one of them. He's going to visit and show us and talk to us about how to start a painting. How does he start a painting? And I'll show you how I start a painting, and other people will show how they start a painting. We've got a couple of other artist guests coming in, and I wish Rosie would come, but I, no pressure. Uh, she's coming. She's, she's so in. Rosie's going to talk about Sick. how to start a painting. And we have different people every day, and we talk about starting a painting, but we also start a painting. And you're not obligated to finish it, although you, you might, but you, you, know, you can take it home and keep working on it. And we'll talk about how to, how to further your art. Teach yourself, because after all, that's what we, if we want to improve our art, we really do. We're grown-ups. We have a busy life, but we can teach ourselves. So anyway, and then we talk a little bit about how do you know when your painting's finished? That's important, too. So Very we're going to go into the techniques of knowing when it's you know, the end. When it's the end, you got to know. Stop it before it gets too like busy and terrible. You got to, you know, where do you, how do you how do you get there? And when do you know that you're there? So we're gonna we're gonna do all that, uh, and we do have a just like a couple more spots open. Yeah, yeah. This week we're gonna fill she them. She getting we full because we, we yeah. have to, it's an intimate group of twenty. I'll just tell you, we don't take more than twenty. So come and be with us and take start a painting and stay here. You see, you get to like it's like a big pajama party. It's true. To eat and sleep. It's camp for grown-ups. <laughs> it is. Anyway, it's come and be with us. Yes, there's a the question over here. Oh, oh you want a declaration. Uh, Alexa, that's up to you, honey. We'll, we'll allow it. Okay. Just this one. Well, you got you to gotta get over. I got to get up over there, right? Yeah, okay, I'm going to get up. All right, good. I'm going to do like a little kick off the stage. All right, we'll, we'll let you do do a declaration. I know I'm going to regret not saying anything, so I'm going to say something. Um, the world works in mysterious ways, and I've never shared this publicly, which is why I want to share, because we're talking about cannabis. Uh, Twelve years ago, I actually was caught with a felony amount of cannabis, and I was let go from the University of Texas, and I used the money, actually, to buy property and start a gathering space, and a lot of people called me crazy, and a lot of people said it would never work, and now I'm about to celebrate 
being open for two years and I, I'm getting into politics. I was just at the First Lady's luncheon three days ago. It's also my birthday. I'm freaking out. The synchronicity is amazing. And I just want to say thank you for gathering today because I just feel very inspired and enlivened. And uh, my declaration is to the commitment of collaboration and communication. Thank you. Oh, beautiful. Tell us okay. your name. Oh, what's your name? My name, <clears throat> my name is Dasha Energy. Da Dash Energy. Dasha Energy. Dasha Energy. Well, thank you so much, Dasha. It's so great. And... and um, Okay, so what else is, is there? That's pretty much it. I mean, we got a great, uh, we're going to let this program kind of conclude here in a second. Please check out our website for all upcoming workshops. We got one with Daniel Morante on uh, oil and grassa tempera painting. We are about to launch one with our boy Cloud Cord uh, about uh, the techniques in producing and performing electronic music. We got stuff in the queue, baby, baby. So we're, we're very excited. Um, laugh a lot tonight, okay? I'm going to pass it back We're over to you, one too. We're going to have one more closing. Closing that prayer. The bened we call it the benediction. It's our prayer. Please, I'll let, you, I'll let you get at it. Thanks, y'all. Dedication to love. From the core of our hearts, we dedicate ourselves to the complete and full expression of love in all our activities and in all our relationships. Love is the soul's medicine, a refuge in our hearts, protecting us from utter despair. Finding compassion in the eyes of the beloved and in the stranger gives us the courage to endure. May love sensitize us with care and wisdom May love help heal the sickness and wounds of life. May love enable us to forgive and accept ourselves. May love enable us to forgive and accept each other. May love help us overcome our cruelty and bitterness, our greed and jealousy, our ignorance and delusion. May love rule our hearts and minds directing us to reach out, doing our best to benefit others, to heal suffering, to give gifts, to create beauty in the infinite network that is our world. A heart of loving kindness pours creative grace into the world to alleviate pain and mend the heart net. To the healing art of love, we dedicate ourselves. May any merit generated by this gathering be offered to the benefit and liberation of all beings. Happy full moon. Happy full moon. <laughs>